everybody! Happy holidays! Welcome to another Eternal Deck Tech. It's Christmas Day and I have an interesting list for you. This is a list that I pulled up from Eternal Warcry. It was turned on to me uh, from some people in chat and I made quite a few different little changes to it, which I'm going to get into. But I do want to give credit to the original creator of this, which is Haffy. Uh, I'll put their description for their Eternal Warcry deck into the YouTube description down below so you can actually check on the link and check out their version of Rat Chalice. So we're just going to jump right in. As you may or may not know from one of my earlier videos, I'm a big fan of Rat Cage. I just like the card in general. It's just a fun little thing and has a lot of cool synergies that I tend to like. And this is a more control shell than we've had before, so it's very reliant on card that you may be familiar with before if you've played a lot of Eternal, which is Crystalline Chalice. So if you don't know what Crystalline Chalice does, once every turn you can pay two to exhaust one of your units with two attack or less to give it plus two, plus two, and draw a card. Very slow, very grindy, but also very powerful. And it works well with the Rat Cage, because Rat Cage, whenever you play a Relic, Crystalline Chalice being a Relic, itself being a Relic, then you get a 1-1 one, one Rat that can't block. The camp block is a pretty big downside here, but it does give you a pretty endless supply of things to use with Chalice. So nice little setup there. The rest of the cards are kind of standard in a lot of ways. You've got Blister Sting Wasp, so you've got like a nice early deadly unit, so you can stop a lot of aggression. And it's also just like a great beater later on. A 3-5 deadly flyer is a pretty decent threat and stops a lot of things, but can also attack very well. Ephemeral Wisp just blocks forever, absolutely ground stalls a lot of decks if they don't have any overwhelm. And you can also make it later on a 4-5 because you can, if it's got zero attack, you can give it plus 2 plus 2, and then it's still 2 or less. So you can give it another plus 2 plus 2 and make it a 4-5. Uh, we have Letherite Courtier, same kind of thing, can become very large, get two activations off the Crystalline Chalice. And it also lets you get extra power cards by playing Relics, which uh, if you saw our Rat Chalice deck before, or sorry, not Rat Chalice, but our Rat Cage deck before, our Relic deck, it was really important. This deck actually, like, Courtier becomes a lot better than you'd think. It gives you a ton of extra value, so I definitely like that. Um, we have the Aurelian Merchant, which obviously you always want to market. Uh, Aurelian Merchant is one of the best ones because of the plus maximum power being very powerful. Um, and yeah, I mean, just a good card overall. The zero attack is almost an upgrade for Chalice because of the fact that you can use it twice, like we've mentioned a few times. So that gives us three different units that have zero attack power, and so you can use multiple times with Chalice. Then we have Sadistic Ritualist, which synergizes very nicely with the Rat Cage because we're going to be getting a lot of extra units that we just might not want to have. And same with Ephemeral Wisp, right? So you can just constantly sacrifice them and draw extra cards so you can continue to draw through your deck. Lumen Defender, mainstay of Chalice decks because it blocks really, really well, so it stops big ground units. And it also gains you a bunch of life, so it can pull you back from a really bad situation very, very quickly, all on its own. And then, of course, get Chalice activations afterwards because it's got low attack. Uh, the rest of it, you've got your Rat Cage and your Crystalline Chalice, which is that synergy, of course. We also have Vault of the Praxis, which you may have seen in my last Relic video around Rat Cage, where you play your second unit in a turn, you draw a card, which is really cool, because on turn 5, a lot of the time, you can kind of slow your, roll your Rat Cage, and then you just go Rat Cage, Vault of the Praxis, draw an extra card, and you're all set up and ready to go. You can just start drawing cards like crazy at that point. Um, so you want to hold off sometimes on playing a unit, a single unit in a turn, because you might want to get Vault of the Praxis active. Uh, last, uh, some of the changes that I did make is they did have Hailstorm in here, and I didn't find that that was the problem for the deck, is like a, a lot of super aggro. I mean, I think that it's going to be harder to beat aggro now, but we do have things like Lumen Defender, you do have Sadistic Ritualist, which has like a, a good defense and... You've got Aurelian Merchant, you've got a lot of things like Ephemeral Wisp that can stonewall them. Blister Sting Wasp is really good against early aggression, right? Like if they've got Oni Ronin or they've got a Snowcrest Yeti, Blister Sting trades really, really well with those kinds of things. So I wasn't as concerned about that, but I did have some problems with getting some of the actual power base to work. So I put in two Aurelian Cargo. And I've liked that a fair bit. Uh, I thought that, that was a big upgrade. A card that I really liked in this deck, and so I put an extra one in the market, was Display of Knowledge. Display of Knowledge is 
awesome. I've been really, really excited about it. So you put an attacking enemy unit on the bottom of the enemy deck, draw a relic from your deck, or give one of your units plus two attack and quick draw. That's the least important one, and it, honestly, it's still pretty powerful. Like, the put attacking en enemy unit on the bottom of the enemy deck is fantastic. It's almost a better equivocate. Doesn't always work, because some units that you need to get rid of don't necessarily attack. Uh, but in general, it's been fantastic. And being able to draw a relic out of your deck is obviously very important when we rely this hard on like Crystalline Chalice or Vault of the Praxis kind of shenanigans. So fantastic card here, Display of Knowledge. Uh, Devour is a wonderful way to use both your extra rats or your Ephemeral Wisp, but also justifies us putting Madness in the deck. So we've got Devour and Sadistic Ritualist to work with the Madness, and that's been pretty good for me. So I definitely like Madness here. And then we have In Cold Blood to get rid of some of the problematic Justice cards that you'll encounter. Things like the Smugglers, like you're going to have the Red Canyon Smuggler, you're going to have... Uh, the lifesteal smuggler you're going to want to get rid of things like ryzen occasionally there's a lot of decks that are running around with those kinds of things might even find a way to put in some extra in cold bloods i think that two has been fine for me because madness has been awesome in cleaning up other problems and so has display of knowledge but in cold blood is in a pretty good situation right now there's quite a few problematic justice cards and eh, in cold blooding them is pretty nasty so we've got all of that in here. Because we have these cargoes, I shifted around the power base a little bit so we could get a primal sigil, make sure that we can get to double primal. The nice thing about cargo, you have to be careful about putting this in over seek power in a lot of decks because if you want to get like above six or if you want to make sure that you get like triple colors, you're not going to want to have cargoes in your deck. They're very powerful uh, because they are useful again later on in the game when you don't necessarily want to seek power. But oftentimes they can cause you problems where you're still pinched on power because you're stuck at like four, but you have all of your different influence requirements and it's transmuted all of your con contraband cargo and you're having trouble with actually getting extra power sources. In this deck, I don't think it's as big of a problem because you'll notice that we want a lot of power for things like Chalice and stuff, but realistically our curve is fairly low. If we can get up to like four, we're generally going to be in a pretty decent position. We can play most anything, and most of those cards can draw us into other power sources. Things like the Courtier here, or like, you know, Chalice itself drawing extra cards. Citizen Ritualist being able to sacrifice things to draw extra cards. Devour drawing extra cards. Things like that. So you should be able to, at that point, set up something where you can keep drawing and hopefully get the last few pieces of power that you need. And... Aurelian Cargo, we only need to get double primal, double time, double shadow. We don't need anything more than that. Um, like In Cold Blood is double shadow, Crystalline Chalice is double primal, double time is vault, but we don't need any triples or anything like that. So Aurelian Cargo seemed like an okay card to put in here rather than seek power. If you have a lot of trouble where you still need to get extra power later on, you're finding the cargo not being as good, I would suggest going back to seek power if you're testing it out. Uh, and then, of course, our market. We have another display of knowledge because I found the card. Absolutely fantastic. Banish for opposing relics and weapon uh, and uh, enemies, sorry, enemy units. Uh, of course, we've got Passage of Eons if they've got a lot of relics that you need to get rid of. I think that there's just a lot of relic decks, so having Banish and Passage isn't a bad idea. We've got Crystalline Chalice because it's a very important card to get out of your market if you can. It's the most important relic in our deck. Even better than Vault of the Praxis or Rat Cage. And then we've got... A Zindel as kind of a finisher if we really need to go deep into the market. But generally, the way that you end games is just by grinding your opponent down, slowly making all of these big beaters, and then just smashing your opponent to death. Like, having a bunch of rats and they're all 3-3s three and just slowly beating them down and grinding them to death that way. So, that's how the deck works. We're going to test it out here and see how it does.